In today's episode, we are going to find out once and for all what is the best flashlight for finding blood or blood trailing. Is it red? Is it green? Is it blue? Is it white? What about UV? In addition, we are going to test the effects of luminol on blood in a real-life situation and find out if it's going to help you in the woods. Welcome back. Um, the first thing I did was order a fistful of these beautiful Convoy S2 Plus lights. I chose these because they're easy to build out, they look nice, and this will give us the, you know, the same reflector in the same host with the same battery and driver for all of them. We will be testing them individually and in combinations. I ordered the LEDs all in the 35 by 35 footprint, that is like a, a Cree XPG, so that they would all be as similar as possible, all of them with the dome on. And I took those LEDs and I reflowed them to a copper MC PCB and then reflowed those to the pill of the flashlight. For drivers, I used the very common boards, the 7135 chip type boards. Uh, these are Q-Lights. I left three chips on my boards, giving us the 1140 milliamp drive current. The hardest part about this whole process has actually been obtaining blood. Finally, I found a slaughterhouse in Oldfield, which is like an hour from here. So, shout out to them for hooking me up with unobtainium. Not only that, they happen to have really good meat, and they'll process your deer for you. So, don't forget about them if you're in the area. Here's a complete rundown of the lights we will be testing. We have a red 660 nanometer, green 525 nanometer, blue 475 nanometer, a cool white 6000K color temperature, a warm white that is 3500K color temperature with a 95 CRI, 365 nanometer UV, and 415 nanometer UV. When I started a thread at BLF about this subject, the thing that came up the most often was our warm white LED with the very high color rendering index. Several people also mentioned using colors, but most of the people who did said in combination one with another to provide contrast. When I looked inside of a cabinet that had this box with kind of some reddish orange color on it and I shine the red light, uh, it just basically turns everything in there the red color. It bleeds everything out and makes it kind of hard to see in my opinion, but when I introduce the blue color to that, you can see the black writing on that box gets very crystal sharp and it does appear to provide contrast between the red stripe on the box and the rest of the stuff that's in there. One other person mentioned that they read in a forensic science book you could use a 415 nanometer UV in combination with a yellow set of glasses to do a similar thing, to provide that contrast, so we're going to test that as well. The only thing left to do now is for you to place your bets. Let me know in the comments section what you think is going to work the best. This is looking pretty good to me. Um, we've got a spot over here with our green grass and some brown leaves, a good mix, kind of like what you'd find in the woods in the fall. So uh, our blood is still quite viable and they gave me quite a bit. So we're gonna, uh, as soon as it gets dark, I'm gonna spread it around and see if we can track it, see if we can find it, if any of these lights help. It does look uh, very correct. I. Oh, it's dripping. I tried some and we get our bright red color from it right now so it's still good even though I got it yesterday. Okay our blood spatter is in place. I'll point it out real quick. We've got Pointing the light right at it kind of seems to blind the camera, but if I pull the hot spot away just a little bit, I can still see it right there. Uh, with my eyes, it's actually a little easier if I put the hot spot right on it, though. So this is the cool white 65 CRI, 
Now we will go to our red. This to me doesn't has the complete opposite effect. I mean, I can't I know right where the blood is and I can't tell that it's blood with just this. Let's try green. Green is definitely not any better. So far just the regular flashlight has been the best. This makes the the blood just like kind of black and I can't really tell it between any of the other leaves. Go to blue. Uh, still not great, but a little better. I can tell more where the blood is now. Like it, it looks blackish red on the leaves. It's it's fairly clear to see, but not definitely not better than the regular flashlight. Let's try our uh, warm white. Now we're getting somewhere. Looking right at these leaves right here in the middle, um, it, it definitely shows up. I, I don't know. I'll have to compare again to the cool white, but I can see it on the tree. I can see it a lot right there at the base of the tree, just below there. Um, not miraculous, not glowing in the dark, but definitely better than any of the colors. Let's try our 365 nanometer UV. Um, well, I'm wearing my clear safety glasses. This, this looks in real life pretty much like it does on the camera. Um, I, it does not help see blood at all. Let's try the 415 nanometer UV. Wearing my yellow safety glasses now. Um, I'll put them over the camera in just a sec. I can see a little more because this puts off more visible light. But it does not that I can see make the blood fluoresce at all or stand out at all. Here we'll put this over the camera. You can see there. I mean it it makes the white part of the leaves kinda stand out. But that's it. Now we're going to try multiple colors at once. Here's red and blue. Nope, sorry, I lied. Red and green. Um, this visually does actually work. Um, especially over there by the base of the tree. Uh, just the red does basically nothing, and then I introduce the green, and it really it does stand out. It's kind it makes the blood look shiny to me. Let's try it red and blue. You know, I was expecting this to be better. But it's really not. I, I really thought that the the red and blue would be exceptional, but the red and green destroys this, and no competition. Okay, now we're gonna try the luminol. I'm just gonna spritz it around as if I was not sure where the blood is. Okay, it's been a while now and I couldn't really see anything, so I'm going to add just a little bit extra blood and then go crazy with this mist.
Okay, I'm not sure what's going on. I have sprayed blood and that mist, the luminol, again and again and waited and resprayed and I, I'm just not getting anything. One time I thought I was and then I looked and it had kind of lit up a leaf a little bit but it wasn't a leaf that the blood was on so I don't, I mean, I mixed it according to the instructions. I waited till the last minute right before I came out here. Um, but there is something glowy in that because when I spray it directly on my hand for about half a second it'll light up there but I, I don't know. It, it doesn't seem to work out here in the in the grass. Maybe the blood has to be dry. I don't know. But we'll, we'll take it in the house and try to mix some together. See what happens. I have made like ultra blood smear. This is kind of a tough call. Um, I would say our top three performers were definitely the red-green combination. It did a good job of making the blood pop. It made it stand out. Uh, next, I think the high CRI warm white. I was really impressed with that while I was walking around out there with it. And probably the, the third top contender is the cool white 65 CRI light. When I first turned on the warm white, the high CRI, I was really impressed and I thought, oh wow, that is better. Uh, but going back and comparing the footage between those two, I'm not so sure because on some of the lighter colored leaves, the, the cool white seemed to do a better job.